Good morning, everybody. Here, oh, that's what I was looking for, okay. I lost my book and then I just found it. So how are you? Ooh, I need to plug in this computer or we may just go bye-bye. Just saying. There we go. Usually I'm, I'm ready for this, you know, at least an hour before. Uh, try today, 10 minutes. <laughs> So, today is Monday, January 23rd. I, can life just go by any faster? I know I've said this in the past. Oh, that's driving me crazy. You know, when you're a kid at school, we had those, you know, analog clocks, and we got out at three, and I swear to you, the hand would get stuck at 10 minutes to three. And those 10, and man, they ran it like a military base. And those 10 minutes equal a year in a little kid's mind. And now it's like, it was Christmas? What are you talking about? <laughs> so anyways, I um, we're going to be doing a new stitch today and or my variation of it and how to even take it up a notch if you'd like. So it's a stitch that I used on my embroidery inside the cherries. And those actually are a little bit smaller, so it might not quite um, resonate how I'm going to show you. But I just think it's a really cool thing, and it can be adapted all different ways. So good morning, good morning. It has stopped raining. And so yesterday, John said, let's go walk down to the Arroyo and see how much water is still coming out. They were releasing a lot from Del Bell Dam, and it was so beautiful outside. It was so cold outside because the wind was whipping. And to my surprise, John's and my two trees came down in the park. You can really kind of only, well, you can see the, the tip of the tree to the left and then the roots of another tree to the right. And what I've learned in this all of this rain stuff is that the danger not only um, happens when it's raining, but it continues to be nef nefarious, nefarious after the fact, especially if a wind comes up and it was cold. It looks warm there. Mm -mm. We were. I was in a down vest, a hat, fingers, and so then John said, "Well, let's walk down." the arroyo this way and all of a sudden we were like almost in quicksand and he goes come on let's just dr jump this creek and I'm like oh my god jump in the freaking creek but what was really cool and I'm glad we did go down uh, were these two buzzards I mean they were huge I, I would I would bet they I don't even know what they weigh but I mean we're talking as big as Heidi huge and then I said, you know what? It's time for us to turn around and go home. <laughs> I'm done. And our shoes were covered in mud. And in fact, I got to go out and beat the dirt off them. Sorry, I'm just yammering here, but I'm waiting for people to get on. You know how that drill goes. Okay, so I don't know if it was last time, but I said uh, the stitch. Yeah, last time the grid stitch was kind of like a cross stitch or needlepoint. And Noella sent me this needlepoint of hers that she did a long time ago. Or is that cross stitch? Oh, man, it's been such a while. You know, it's interesting because I think a lot of us come to quilting after experimenting in other formats. So, for instance, my first experience was, was embroidery with my grandma. And then I got into a little, not cross stitch, um, not cross stitch, um, needlepoint. And I'm talking like fifth grade, fourth grade, okay? Then I got into sewing garments. And that's when I got my sewing machine for eighth grade graduation. Um, and then in college, I had the opportunity to take all sorts of different classes. And that's where I learned... Uh, in one class to do bobbin lace. It wasn't the assignment, but that's how I fulfilled the assignment. And just try all these different things. And then when quilting came into my life, it was like one day there was this piece and it was like, I found my home. And I will bet you dollars to donuts, that's the same with many of you that are watching right now. So, you know, it's always fun to dabble in other things, but 
man, somehow with quilting, it just all comes together fantastically. Also, I know we have a bunch of new people on here, and one person wrote me and wanted to know about last year's BOM 2022 by Irene Blank, and could she somehow get the pattern from us? No, that would be an infringement of copyright. And when you see a BOM like Color My World, and actually we're gonna look at that in a moment, um, you can get hold of that artist directly and then purchase the, the pattern from her. Sorry, but that's just the way the contract is written. Okay, then Margo sent me this. Margo did not do this. And then Margo, I'm sorry, I lost the name of the artist who did this. If you're on here, you could type it and I would be very, very happy. But I love this face. I don't just like it. I love, obsess over this. Apparently, there's a Facebook page, a private page for uh, faces. I mean, everything from the hat to the needle in it with the pins and then the little strawberry, the spool earrings, and then her hair. I just love this. I can't get enough of these faces, okay? Okay, then, Su let's see. Susan Cleveland, we're back to her. There's that little rickrack sticking out of her binding. I shared that last week. And then on her Facebook today, uh, she put little um, whiskers on the kitten. <laughs> it's so cute. You know, it's in the details I'm learning. It's in the details, things that make you stop and look a little bit harder. And I have some quilts to show that. Uh, this, this was Color My World, and this was at Road to California. And the maker is um, Rosedale, um, Maureen Wood, and then quilter Faith McLeod from Canada. So let's go back and look at it again. It is fabulous with that yellow background. And then you can see she has different um, buildings in the four corners, or, or some buildings have been adapted, etc. All right, and then Suzanne sent me this. It is, okay, let me get rid of this, let me get rid of this, her fruit, and she did more stitches on the inside. I don't know, for those of you who have just done the outside, you may want to grab more <laughs> and more. And what was interesting that she said was that she, I think she said she was in Girl Scouts or something, where she hated it, hated embroidery, hated it. And so she thought, what the heck? And she said what she realized was that she didn't like being told what stitches to put in where. And so she felt very confined by it. Whereas this, the sky's the limit. And I want you to look at those cherries. She just did little itty bitty seed stitches, which is super cute. And basically I'll be showing you another option for that. But I really like these cherries a ton. Okay. Then I got this from Sue, speaking of Girl Scouts, this is a quilt, obviously made of sashes and um, Girl Scout ribbons and bands and all that. And this is, to me, a very um, folk art approach type quilt top, and, and I, it drew me in. And so one of the things, after I'm like looking, going, how in the world did she do this? Um, look at this. Look at that. So when you look, there's like these little girls all over the place. Yeah, I think I showed you the little girl at about four o'clock, but like look at seven o'clock. And then that's gotta be part of the uniform and all that. So to me, this is a very folky, funky, delightful quilt, heralding girls pass. And from what I can tell on that, it wasn't just one gal, it was many different because you've got the different troop names and all that kind of stuff. I was a um, Girl Scout dropout. <laughs> I didn't like it. The rules, I don't, don't tell me what to stitch in that place. <laughs> so, all right, let's take a look at this. This went out in the newsletter 
I think Sunday, I'm not sure. But John said, take a look at this quilt. And he was really taken, and I'll tell you the maker's name when we get through, um, really taken with it. And at first shot, I'm like going, oh my gosh, look at that quilting. Um, it's called bees something. I, oh, shoot, I don't have my notes in front of me. But there's bees in it. And um, not only is there absolutely beautiful machine quilting, beautiful. And I wonder if she doesn't have some of Cindy's templates. I don't know. But John was the one that pointed out, look at the center of that flower. That flower, it, is that the stitch we were doing Friday? And I blew it up. I, I believe so. So then I, then I took a second look at the B. Look at that. Um, I don't know if on the wings of that bee, I mean, how did, how did this person do it? Obviously it's trapuntoed. And so the stitching must have been done before. Now, whether the wings were done by machine and the body, my guess is done by hand is pretty spectacular. John, you got a question? Be yourself. Be yourself. And I'm going to show everybody right now. Ooh up in Canada, I believe. Oh, Sweden, Sweden. And John said when he posted it, he wanted to know what huh meant. And uh, she was the first person that answered. And so um, she said, huh is like Livermore, Alameda, California, or Livermore, California. It's town, county, country. That's it. And so Simone, it is just beautiful and congratulations. Now talk about poking your nose in something closer. John doesn't usually call me in, okay, for to look at quilts, all right? I'm becoming a jaded old bird here. <laughs> but this got best of show at Road. And, and I, at first glance, I'm like going, well, okay, there's a lot of work do kind of like hearts. And then I, and then Mary Kay took these pictures. Thank you, Mary Kay. And I looked at this and I'm going, okay, that alone would constitute a quilt. Forget all the outside stuff. Let's take a look at that. I mean, look at what is going on. I believe she was making it for her daughter. Okay. But then I got my nose in closer and I see the hearts and I see the circles and I see that seed stitch. And I'm now I'm super drawn in, and Mary Kay got super great close-ups. <clears throat> uh, I I mean, how simple so many of those stitches are. Not to the right, not to the vertical right. That's a whole other story. But how simple, and how freaking beautiful it is. Okay. I would have never put those funky, weird shapes in. And now I will. They are adorable. So I love quilts when, well, let's see who made that. Japanese, right? Of course. Um, Ayako Kawakami. I mean, it's totally, totally messed that up. Um, I just, what these Japanese women do, are, is amazing. And I remember one year, this is kind of a funny story, and then I'll get to demoing. Uh, I put a quilt into Mancuso show. It was their first show here on the West Coast. And I thought I'm going to win because it was really a good quilt. And it had, it was right when there was all this controversy about quilts being made outside of the United States and sold like at the Smithsonian, which by the way, Carrie and um, um, Car the field piece on Quilts Inc., they, they talk about this. They went and fought the Smithsonian because they were selling goods imported and it really made people mad. So I thought, okay, I'm going to win. It's Eagle, Carrie and Nancy, sorry, with an Eagle with a ribbon that goes made in America. And I started it in a Charlotte War Anderson class. It didn't even get thank you for coming to the show nothing. And I was shocked until it was the first time I walked down an aisle, the aisle and saw Japanese quilts. I mean, they're just, they're just to another standard completely. So 
What are we going to do today? Where are we at? Yeah, we got the crew here. Uh, let me get organized here. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. Let me bring this down. Okay, there we go. I love my Atlap app. I think we just got some more in. I just love it. All right, so what we're going to be doing is this right here. And I'm going to do an exaggerated version of it. But I'll tell you when we, and there's different ways to do it. Um, well, let's talk about that, okay? I'm doing it the way I want to do it because it's my quilt, right? So what I would do is, again, and when you joined, you got one of these pens, right? This, this holiday season, renewal time. I'm going to make it kind of big so you can see it. All right? Actually, that is about the size of the cherry, but I'm going to go outside of it. So, let's see, where's my thread? Watch out, Alex. It might just bite you. What I might do is do this. Go across. Go across. Go across. And go across. Whoops. This is one of the reasons I love this pan. Um, this wears out sooner than this, and so we're coming up with a prototype that's a whole pin. And I said, why would that be? And we think maybe the well is a little bit less on this side for the eraser stuff than the ink. So that's just an FYI. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. The instructions in the book, am I in frame? Yes. Let me see if I can get it even a little bit better. There we go. I'm just going to go all the way across. All right. That is what I am going to do. Uh-oh. There it went. I've discovered two new shows as I'm stitching. This one is blood and guts and gory, but oh my gosh, I just love Sylvester Stallone in it. Uh, uh, Tulsa King. It, it's, it, there's only eight episodes, and I can't hardly wait for the next season. And then, here we go. Now, what I might do in here, because I didn't just stop short of the center, I think I'm just going to go in here and just tie it down. Just tie it. Tulsa King. I'll do one more across this way. Then the other one that is just so lighthearted and so sweet is Under the Vine. I love the main character, and I believe there's two seasons of that, the woman. I'm just tagging it down a little bit. Maybe I'll do one. See how that's getting funky right there? I'm going to tag that down. Poor, poor little Heidi. She has to go outside now from 10 to 10.30. Okay, great. There, that's all good to go. But now, oh, here's that stitch again, chain stitch. Good old chain stitch. Okay. I'm going to show you how to take this to another level. Again, I don't think there's enough space in that cherry to do this. So super cute. I can't stand it. How are we doing on time? Oh, great. Under the Vine is about, is about two people that really don't know each other, that they get a double inheritance to a vineyard. And so it's, they go there and they know nothing about being in how to work a vineyard. Super sweet. Under the vine, Gore, Tulsa King. There we go. I'm talking to you like you're my neighbor. 
Isn't this adorable? My best friend, Karen, who doesn't quilt, is actually getting really excited about this. So I'm going to get her one of these panels so she can have fun with it. She did one red work quilt of mine and loved it. And so she's ready to continue her adventure. Stitching. Am I going to make it? Yes, I'm going to make it. Just, you know, you want to make sure you have enough thread. It's kind of like running out of your bobbin thread when you're, you have that much left, right? Eh. All right. Okay. Look, super cute. And again, this ink will fade within a couple days. I don't worry about the back because I've got the fate, the lining on it, so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not going to enter this in shows. Here. Question? Okay. That's my producer just came in. What do you want John to talk to you about when he takes a couple of my lives? I want to know. He said, I'm not going to do it. And I said, yeah, you are. <laughs> He's being really nice to me so I can get away with this right now, right? All right, so here, let's look at this one. All right, you can see here that I did the spokes a little bit shorter. And I do believe I went down in each time. And this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, perfect. But now how about this? Love this stitch. I think it might be called spider web. I'm not sure. What you do is you come up in another color. Well, if you want, remember, this isn't Girl Scouts. You can do it any way you want. I'm going to go around this thread. And then I'm going to go to the next spoke and I'm going to go under. Okay. Then I'm going to go around this thread. This is so smart looking. Super easy. And see what's neat is I've got like a little bumpity bump in the middle where I went over them. Okay, is everybody? Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so now what do I do? I'm at the end. Oh, I'm just gonna go around again. So this is a modified spider web because it's got the lazy daisies on the outside. Gosh, you know what? I'm trying to figure out what dumb, dumb things I can do after surgery. It might be fun to just do a bunch of circles and just see what you could do with them. Kind of like how Sue Spargo does it in wool, right? Oh, her, she had a good, you guys, if you're not on Sue Spargo's mailing, mailing list, I would get on it. She, she just really puts out quality things. Okay. And at Rogue, Kristen picked me up a pack of greens. Okay, let me just keep going. So last night, I'm Heidi, off I'm off camera again. Thank you. Blame it on the cameraman, not me. And there's other variations of this particular stitch. And look how beautiful this variegated is working into it. 
And again, if your thread starts getting twisted, untwist it, because that's just going to cause you big problems. Okay. On one hand, this is like watching paint dry. Uh oh, now see how it kind of went over? I don't want that. I want it on the outside. Okay. And this kind of gets us into wrapping stitches, which is a fun thing to do. Okay. That, it's just beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, I am using a, um, what am I using exactly? I believe I'm using Finca, which is one strand. It comes, it's a, uh, it, it's not, if I was doing DMC, I would do two strands, okay? Like where you have the six, but this is Finca and this is uh, one, one strand. It's an eight, and then here's a wonder fill that is one strand, and it's an eight. All right? So, again, if it's the six, if it's the six that you pull ab apart, like in the old-fashioned days, what you got from the dime store, I used to buy this stuff when I was a kid. You'd split it and do two, unless you were doing really super fine work. Let me see if this... I mean... It just goes on and on. Okay, what else could I do? Let's say I go out to the purple. There's no reason I couldn't do some sort of V-stitch. Oh, shoot, I gotta, gotta put my thing. Like a V-stitch right here that goes out. Well, you know what, that's dumb. That's why we got this camera. Let's see. Like, Let's just pretend that this pen is my needle. I mean, I could go like this. And then I could do French knots. This is kind of what I did with those buttons, right? It's just what can I do to add more? Do I need another French knot in here? Maybe. You just keep adding and adding and adding. And it's so much Fun. Complete fun. Okay. So on Wednesday, I've got to decide what I'm going to do. I'm thinking about doing wrap stitch, simple stitches, how to weave things in and out and all that kind of stuff. And then um, Friday, I got pre-op stuff to do. And then Monday's the big day. So think about me next Monday, please. I have felt everything from you. And um, did you put out anything here that you would want John to talk about? Anything from John. Paul, I have to laugh. Uh, class of 73. I'm class of 73. Our 50th reunion this year. I can't believe it. And I, I put something snarky on Facebook like, okay, who's supplying the walkers, right? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, if you've, uh, not to put you on the spot right now, which I just did, I would, I would email me at A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -S at gmail.com, and then I could compose a list for you. Now, next week's going to be dark. I'm just sure of it. I have no idea how long I'm going to be in the hospital. They said one night, and I'm sitting there going, there's no way I'm coming home the next day. So I think it all gets down to insurance and stuff like that. So I know how to handle that. Is the grid weaving stitches in the creative stitches book? Yolanda? Um... I don't know, but look at this. Thank you for asking. Here's this, what I just showed you is a variation of a whipped wheel. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the grid one, I mean, it looks, it looks, it looks easy, but the main thing is don't pull too tight. Yolanda, I don't know. 
I do not know. I'm looking through real fast. But this is why I also have so many books, okay? Because they have the basic ones, but then this person does this, and this person does that, and all of that. Uh, okay. Look at all this. How is this cancer affecting him and the family? Yeah, you can talk about that. Um, thank you, Helen. Please, please don't. Oh my, this is like, this is like, um, Susan thinks it's called trellis. Okay, we've got to look that up. Um, and my kitty's not going to my seventh, my 50th anniversary, 50th high school reunion. <laughs> She's calming down a little bit. Okay, first of all, you guys, um, Oh, you know what, Jude? I like that. John could talk about the evolution of TQS because it really has been a journey, and it's kind of interesting. We we were spitting in the wind, okay? We still are. <laughs> we still are. So thanks for being here. We'll do something on Wednesday, and um, thank you so much for everything you're offering me from all over the world. I so appreciate it. See you Wednesday. Bye-bye.